Welcome back to episode 6 of grade 12 financial mathematics. In this episode, we're going to discuss sinking funds. Now, it's not a very usual term, so let me first explain to you what we mean by a sinking fund. This is when a company or even a school, whenever they want to buy equipment, so a company maybe buy a truck or a school want to purchase a photocopy machine, uh, we now need to plan for whenever these equipment need to be replaced. So if you just think with me for a moment, we buy a truck now, but we want to replace this truck in five years time. So we know the value of the truck at this point in time. So we first of all want to calculate what will be the value of the truck after the five years and you hopefully hear depreciation. So the first thing we're going to calculate is depreciation on the purchase price of the equipment or the track. But then after five years, we want to buy a new truck. So we want to calculate what the purchase price of that new truck will be. And that is called inflation, which is compound interest. Now, once we've done the depreciation, so then we know what the scrap value of the truck will be. And we've done the inflation, then we know the price of the new truck in five years time. That will give us the amount that is still outstanding. So we want to purchase that new truck. We're going to use the funds from selling the old one, but you will agree with me, there will be a shortfall. So that will give us that shortfall. And then we're going to establish a sinking fund. Now, a sinking fund is similar uh, to a future value annuity. And we're going to calculate how much money we must invest as a company for over this five years so that we have enough money to buy the new truck in five years' time. So let us now discuss this more. So, just a little uh, reminder of what we spoke about. I say when equipment is bought, provision has to be made to replace the equipment in the future. This is done by means of a sinking fund. Regular payments are made to save up for the replacement of the equipment. Now, that regular payments is what we still need. To set up a sinking fund, we follow, uh, the following has to be calculated. What the old equipment will be sold for in the future is called depreciation that we discussed in episode one. What new equipment will cost in the future that is called inflation, or we also refer to it as compound interest. We also spoke about that before. And that, the difference between these two will be that difference between the two values, the inflated value, the one with inflation, minus the depreciated value. That is the amount that we will need in the future. That is our future value. That has to be saved up by the time the equipment has to be replaced. So let us now discuss a problem and see how we're going to calculate this. As you can see, the problem looks quite impressive because there are lots of information given. My advice always is to do it one by one and you will see. A company purchased an excavator for 900,000 Rand. The value of the machine depreciates at a rate of 10% per annum on the reducing balance. The company wants to buy a new excavator in 10 years time. Very important, in 10 years time. Inflation is estimated at 70% per annum. The old ex excavator will be sold as scrap value after 10 years. To purchase a new machine, the money obtained from selling the old excavator will be used 
A sinking fund is set up to finance the balance. The interest rate for the fund is 9% per annum compounded monthly. The first payment into the sinking fund is made immediately. I will come back to this and you please remember in our second uh, episode or third episode when we discussed annuities, we spoke about this immediate payment in a sinking fund or a future value annuity. And the last payment at the end of the 10 years. How much must the company pay into the sinking fund per month? My suggestion always is, let's start with depreciation. So depreciation, formula A equal to B, 1 minus I to the N. Remember, P was given to us as 900,000. The interest rate for depreciation, please take note that the, for depreciation it was 10%. Inflation was 7 and the sinking fund was 9%. Please remember that you have different interest rates here. So my interest rate for this one was 0 0,1 and you will notice that I didn't divide by 12 because depreciation is per annum, is a yearly calculation. So now we will substitute, but we still need to know what N will be. So this N represents the number of years and that will be 10 years. So N is equal to 10. So now we can calculate our depreciated value, which is 900,000. 1 minus 0, 0,1 and the exponent is 10. If you put this onto your calculator, you will get 313,810 rand and 60 cents. So let's say again, the value of this excavator after 10 years will be 313,810. Remember, the purchase price was 900,000 rand. So you can already see that, of course, we, uh, the excavator is way, uh, the value is way less than the original price. And now we're going to calculate what the new excavator will cost us. And that is which we use inflation or compound interest. And that formula A equal to B, 1 plus I to the N. So again, the P is 900,000. Only important thing here is that our interest rate is different to the depreciation one. And you will notice that we said that inflation is estimated at 7% per annum. And this inflation is also yearly. So it is 0 0.07. You notice I and not going to divide by 12 because it's a yearly calculation. So now let's substitute and find the new price after 10 years. So it's 900,000, that was the purchase price. We're going to apply the inflation on this price. The exponent is 10 because we do it for 10 years. And please use your calculator and see if you agree with my answer. My answer, 1770436 and 22 cents. So this excavator, after 10 years, the new one will cost us just more than 1.7 million. So you will now agree with me, we will now be able to find the difference easily. Because remember, we want to set up a sinking fund. To, do, to set up that sinking fund, we first need to determine what is the money we would like to save. What is that amount? And that is the difference between inflation and depreciation. So that difference will now be 
1770436.22 subtract the depreciated amount of 313810.60 so our sinking fund will be 1456625 and the cents, if I can just double check, yes, 62 cents. So it is 1,456,625 rand and 62 cents. So that will be what the shortfall that we will have to buy the new excavator. So that is the amount we're going to use for our future value annuity. So I just repeat quickly, We've, we bought this excavator for 900,000. We want to work out the depreciation on it. What will it be worth after 10 years? We said it will be 313,000. What will be the price of the new excavator in 10 years time, which is 1.77 million. And what is the difference that we need to save uh, over the 10 year period, and that is 1.45 million rand that we would like to save. So let's now set up the sinking fund so that we can calculate uh, our monthly payment. So we now want to work out the monthly payment. that this company needs to make and that is to save for that shortfall. Now to do this monthly payment this is a future value annuity problem because we're going to save money for 10 years 1 plus i to the n minus 1 over i. So let us now substitute. Remember if they want us to find the monthly payment they ask us to find x. The interest rate that we have here, and I want to take you back to our problem, um, is that the interest rate for this uh, sinking fund is 9% per annum. Secondly, what is really important is that the first payment into the sinking fund is made immediately. So I want you to remember that. So we have our interest rate, which is 0 0.09 over 12. Remember, because it's calculated monthly, you will remember our future value amount that we need, that 1.4 million. So that means I'm going to substitute 1456625 two, five, and 22 cents. X is what we are looking for. And we say one plus my interest rate, 0 0.09 over 12. And now, very important, what will N be? And for a moment, let's just quickly discuss N. So to know what our N will be, you will agree it's 10 years, so it is 10 times 12. We're going to start saving immediately. So you agree we said in our previous lessons that we must add one to it. So that means it will be 121 payments that we need to make because it's 120 plus the one because, that we, because we started immediately. So that is one to one. So now let's manipulate it a little bit so that we can use our calculator easily. So we're first going to multiply with this and then we're going to divide by the whole bracket. So we can say x is equal to this one, four, five, six, six, two, five, and 22 cents. We multiply it with 0 0.09 over 12. This is the denominator. And we're going to divide with that whole bracket 
of 1 plus 0, 0, 0,09 over 12. The exponent is 121 minus the 1. So, use your calculator again with your fraction buttons and see what you get. So, that is the future value amount. Multiply with this i, divide with a bracket, and we can work it out at once. And I hope you agree with my answer. I've got 7,433 7, rand and 7 cents. So this 7,433 is what this company must save if from the day they bought the first excavator for 900,000, they must make these monthly payments for 10 years or 121 of them so that they will have the 1.45 million shortfall after they sold the old excavator. I really think that this is a, a very interesting question, but I don't think you will, you will have too many problems with it. Thank you.